Welcome to our YouTube channel of Trishla Foundation. The, our main objective is to provide all the information related to cerebral palsy based on scientific facts. If you like the information from the video, available on our YouTube channel and want to keep an eye on all the latest updates, then please subscribe our YouTube channel of Trishla Foundation. Greeting from Trishla Foundation. We welcome you all in the YouTube channel of Trishla Foundation. In first part, you know about the use of arthrosis, why arthrosis is being used, type of the arthrosis, and what are the varieties of AFO. AFO is the most commonest arthrosis is being used in the cerebral palsy. But according to their label, their problem, their indication, their age, we have to modify the AFOs. In this lecture, we will talk about other arthrosis that is related with the SMO, hip arthrosis, spine, and upper limb arthrosis. In SMO, SMO means supramalular arthrosis. Supramalular arthrosis allow free dorsiflexion and plantar flexion movement. Free dorsiflexion and plantar flexion movement means the ankle movement and the foot and ankle joint. But this SMO is the smallest one, this AFO, that has to be used when there is the good calf muscle power, ankle don't have any abnormality and only flexible deformity in the foot. Then SMO can be used. This SMO is being indicated in GMCS1 where this child is fully independent and it is being very commonly used during the activity just like crawling, heap kneeling to standing. That means this SMO is very very useful where child have good control are the muscles and it is very very useful in the functional activity on the grounds. One slide you can see that USB, uh, USBL shoe insert. The shoe insert is being used for the children with good control on ankle, foot joint, flexible press planus and sometimes when medial arch is broken just to support the foot plate in the sport shoes that can be used in normal children as well as the spastic children where this very very mild spastic and very very mild problem is there. After this, there is need of stretching arthrosis. As you know, because most of the children with cerebral palsy will have this spastic and spastic has to be controlled. There is no lots of medicine, not much therapy. Sometimes you can use the different type of the arthrosis by that muscle can be stretched down. You can see on this screen that the three different type of arthrosis is uh, described there. One arthrosis that is just have the AFO. There is two strap has been given. It can be used during the night time and we can tie it down. This arthrosis can be used after giving the bottle and toxin. Two arthrosis which is upside that is being used in the stretching of the posterior calf muscle of the knee. As you know in diaplegic spastic cerebral palsy, hamastic muscle is tight. And then after some time, posterior capsule of the knee joint will be tightened up. With that, flexion deformity will be reappear. With this arthrosis, we can stretch two hours per day so that posterior knee capsule contracture can be avoided, can be prevented. Next slide, you are seeing that leg gaiters, pedirap, knee mobilizer. Use of the knee gaiter is just to extended position. It is being used on the uh, leg portion. This is the leg gator. It is being used during the activities, standing position, in night time, and sometime after the surgery on the hamstring muscle. Its function is to straighten the knee joint. That's all. And it also being used where the quadricep muscle is weak. Another thing in lower limb is required. The rotation straps. Some children walk with outside leg from hip to toe the internal rotator muscle is weak and we are not able to strengthen the internal rotator by all therapeutic modalities because of some sensory tissues in these cases we can use elastic bandages from the toe to the pelvis and even on the uh, trunk areas with that they provide more joint stability greater proprioception help in the obtaining correct alignment of the lower limbs. 
it is a spiral traction given from the hill to uh, pelvis so it is very very useful in certain cases where leg is going outside next problem as we know that hip subluxation and dislocation are very very common in cerebral palsy children in one non walker children just like given cases 4 and 5 it is common up to 75 to 90 percent in that cases prevention is always better than treatment and how we can prevent it early identification and early intervention if less than 45 degree hip abduction is possible hip abduction means taking the leg outside it is better to prevent it if it is going inside then we have to make some cut in the adductor group of muscle so that limb go outside even during the taking the child we have to take the child like that so that leg should be apart aim of the hip brace is same to keep the leg apart and making some distance between the both legs so prevent the progression of the hip subluxation you can see the, how we can prevent the hip subluxation when hip subluxation or dislocation can occur what is the treatment protocol by going to the youtube channel that's shown on the screen this two braces I have shown here hip abduction bar to keep the leg apart one pillow is there pillow means just to have to apply in the both leg in between the both leg so that leg can be apart if you don't have this pillow you just put the pillows and whenever taking the child the leg should be wide apart hip abduction braces there is different variety of hip abduction braces is there you can see on the screen one hip abduction brace just to utilize after the surgery one rosen braces is being used in after the surgery on the hip dislocation where child has hip dislocation he has undergone surgery on the femur and estabulum he has been operated plaster was given for two months after the surgery removal of the plaster this hip uh, one rosen brace is being used to keep the leg apart in a stable position till the muscle and bone everything becomes the normal Swash brace. Swash brace is commonly used during the walking and gait training, but it's very very costly affair. So in India, uh, we less use at that time. In the screen, you can see three braces: the full body orthosis, hip knee ankle foot orthosis, knee ankle foot orthosis. As you know, cerebral palsy children will have the problem of the balance. They have problem in the muscle weakness. They have problem in the abnormal tone pattern. This type of the orthosis has no place in the management of cerebral palsy children. It is sorry to say that most of the time, whenever you are getting the inquiries from the different part of the world, they are getting this type of the braces. As you know that if you are giving the braces, child will not act, not will perform any activities. The muscle will be more weaker, more weaker, more weaker and as child have the problem in the balance so this type of the orthosis no places in the management of the children now come with the spinal braces as you know that some children nearly 10 to 20 percent children will have problem in the neck control so sometime we can use this neck collar which is visible on this screen but it is very very rarely we used here we first try to strengthen the neck muscle, we try to increase the activity which improve their neck control but in some cases where trunk control is very very poor, neck control is not there and child become the elder 6-7 year, their IQ is very good, hand activity is very good but because of poor trunk control, poor neck control, he is not able to work. Then this type of the spinal brace is given, that is molded spinal brace they will give chin support here and back support will be here by giving this in GMCS 5 level we are not getting any neck control despite of intensive therapy then this type of braces will be used with that method he will be uh, better to use his hand activities his visual tracking will be much better he can talk he can discuss he can do lots of activity by the hand and can sit properly on the chair and wheelchair. Now come to the upper limb orthosis. As you know in the upper limb most of the children with cerebral palsy will have some dyskinetic pattern, muscle weakness 
and most of the children the commonest pattern of the upper limb is like that that means pronation deformity inside movement of the forearm there is uh, wrist will be drop down thumb will be inside and flexion deformity will be on the finger so that whatever brace we are going to use that has to be used to manage this one first brace is wrist darcy flexion splint this is the splint because you know whenever we are working even in normal children and even us we have to use like this position 10 degree of upside movement that is the wrist darcy flexion position so when there is weakness in the wrist darcy flexion we are waiting for the surgery till the age of 6 7 year we can use this type of the brace like this position then child can do much better activity that is the wrist darcy flexion splint another splint is superinter splint superinter splint means this type of the brace it has to be used in by the thumb here like this <coughs> like this has to be used thumb will be here then this will be wrap and supination or pronation movement will depend on how you wrap from inside outside or outside inside most of the function is being used in the supination when we are eating taking something so we have to move upward from so by that brace we can uh, increase the supination movement so that it will be better controlled in the children child you can see this uh, video small video this is the supination pronation it promote for supination or pronation depending on how we wrap it attach it to back of the hand on the thumb side of the hand and step also assist with wrist extension and radial division that is much more useful during the activity thumb abductor sprint thumb abductor sprint means i have told you that thumb in palm deformity is very commonest deformity in the cerebral palsy we have to kept outside thumb then finger will be able to work this is the one type of the thumb brace like this like this brace so this brace will be put like that and one other brace can be made at the home just putting one strap here and making a strap here so that thumb will be outside then child can have better function just by the writing taking the object taking the glass and eating hand gaiter same gaiter smaller size can be used as a hand gaiter hand gaiter is very very important during making the position in the crawling and whenever in CIMT, when, when one limb is affected, other limb is normal, in the normal limb this gator will be found and some class will be wrapped around so that by abnormal hand, child will be working for 2-3 to three hours in a day. This is the indication of the hand gator. Now after seeing all those, this, all those common orthoses, now come to the time of the cerebral palsy what type of the braces are being utilized first it is the hemiplegia second one is the diplegia two commonest variety of cerebral palsy in hemiplegic spastic cerebral palsy most of the time calf muscle is tight spastic or shortened in long term so to stretch down this calf muscle we need dynamic effort it is very very useful it gives good stretching to short muscle it normalizes gait pattern if dorsal flexor muscle is weak or poor selective control or child has to walk and go to the school then PLSOFO is more useful. You can see on the screen in the hemiplegic cerebral palsy the different variety of problem can occur. Type 1 is a drop foot. In the drop foot we can use PLSO. There is some digit AFO type. Type 2 is true equanus. In this dynamic AFO is very very useful in one case in the apparent weakness apparent equanus where we have to use some side type of support that is a dynamic effort will be useful diplegic spastic cerebral palsy most of the diplegic children start walking with equanus gait in early years but as time passes if child have good motor control with severe spastity then they will start having the tightening in the hamstring muscle that means they will start having the jump knee gait but as their 
is height, weight is increases. They have poor motor control. They have undergone some surgery on the calf muscle or severe stretching on the calf muscle. The knee start knee will start buckling. That will give crouch gait. Crouch gait means hyper dorsiflexion at the ankle joint and flexion at the knee joint and flexion at the hip joint. You look. Foot will be the move upward, knee will be bent, and hip will be bent. That is known as a crouch gait. Crouch gait is very very bad because in the crouch gait they require three to four times more energy expenditure. And as weight increases, age increases, they can go to the wheelchair. Crouching increase very at very fast speed in teenagers. Crouching is bad for the walking capability. That should be prevented. And knee top brace depend upon their motor control, balance, how they walk. I have shown in the screen the three gait pattern. Equanus, jump knee gait and crouch gait. In this screen you can see that when there is a true equanus is there. Dynamic ego is very very useful. In jump knee gait they require 95 to 90 degree AFO. When they have got the crouch gait, they require solid FO or FRO. This other FO will not be utilized in useful in the crouch gait. In small kids where good strength in gastron is present, dynamic FO can be much more useful. A child start crouching, rigidity of FO should increase from dynamic FO to PLS or solid FO. Decreasing the ankle motion by using the PLS should be considered in school age children in the spastic cerebral palsy. But when they start bending more, they have more crouching, then that uh, solid FO, solid FO or more dynamic one is required as the FRO is required. In older and heavier children, thickness and strength of FO material should be more. Just like the 6 mm thickness, uh, polypropylene is required. According to GMCS, in the US 1, I have told you SMO and dynamic is very very useful. In 2, most of the time dynamic PLS is required. In the US 3, sometimes with crowd care, FRO is required. Otherwise, PLS or dynamic one is required. And 4 and 5, big crowd care, they require the solid F4. And you know that orthosis what we are talking about it is, can be prepared by two methods just by the taking the measurement by the scales or taking the mold with the plaster but taking the mold by the plaster and making that FO will be much better than taking just measurement because by taking the mold it will give good shape good control on the heel pattern proper molded orthosis is better than already designed orthosis and given here there is two YouTube link where the corners gate can how we can manage how we can manage the crouch gate we can go through and see how we are managing there general caution for the all the therapies of the parents the timing of FO how much time the child need to the beer FO the FO is being prescribed during the activities time that means during the day time night time FO is less preferred. Only in the certain cases where spastic is too much or bottle of toxin has given or surgery was given. All the gait training, all the floor activity has to be done with the use of FO. Without FO, if you are doing the activities, foot deformity can develop, can progress up to the extent where that deformity cannot be prevented at the minute surgery. Neither every child with cerebral palsy is totally different. With progress in the functional capability, motor issues, braces need to be modified, as I have told you in the first lecture. Make sure orthotics are securely held, not to lose. Loose fitting devices can rub to the skin, can cause blister, sore, damage to the skin. So, immediately they have to be corrected, shown to your consultant, and if there is Orthosis becomes the smaller damage that has to be changed. Proper cleaning and maintenance of orthosis is very very important. 
they have to make clean, keep them dry, keep them in the sunlight. And if child have the lots of sweating, then they have to wear the cotton sock. Mm. If they have a reaction to the wrapping in the AFO, different type of material. So meet your orthotics, change this uh, under wrapping with the cotton material. That, so that allergy portion can be minimized. Holes can be made in the orthosis to give the proper ventilation. In that cases, this more ventilation will be there. Child will have the less sweating problems. I have given some references for the specialist orthosis. They can go there and have the lots of material available internet on the internet. So in this talk, even in earlier talk, I have talked about lots about the orthosis what modifications required, what type of the orthosis, when it is required, according to their problem. So every parent, every therapist has to go many times to this lecture, see how your child is behaving, what type of the orthosis, what modifications is required. You have to meet your consultant and see at what age what modifications required. I have tried to cover all the concern with the orthosis. If you get any question, just message me in the message box. We will try to answer you. If you got some new thing, just message me. We will incorporate in our treatment protocol. Thank you. Thank you. सेरबल पालसी में अधिक जानकारी के लिए हमारे YouTube चैनल त्रिशला फाउंडेशन और जे जैन ट्रिपल नाइन को सब्सक्राइब करें